If you'd like to try what we make at Superstition, it's as easy as going to our website, superstitionmeadery.com, clicking on Web Store, and you're shopping. Make sure you follow us on social media because we release new products almost every week, and you might just find your next favorite craft beverage. Cheers. Yeah, I think this is about as clear as we're going to get it. I just want to be in position because when I open this up, it's going to spray. So I just want to make yeah. sure it's spraying down the cellar onto a tank. So when we first started, we were doing a filter on our strawberry sweethearts, which we need to have ready for Valentine's Day. And we got partway about 300 gallons into 800 gallons, and we realized that the filter wasn't really clearing anything anymore. So we had to stop what we're doing and we're doing basically a filter reconstruction. This seven micron filter is primarily used for pulling out um, Large sediment. the larger yeah. sediment and getting it ready for clarification and really polishing it. So we're just clarifying it slightly with this. And in this process, we started on the outlet here with some ambient water to blast those large particulates on the outside of the filter pads that are inside this lenticular filter. Um, after we got that to a point where it's running out clear and free of sediment, we switched to a forward flush and transitioned from ambient temperatures that we used on a back flush to hot temperatures at 140 degrees is what we're running here. And that will pull out all the product that's left packed into the pad, not the, um, not the stuff we're filtering out, but the actual product. So the water will come out oxidized, um, be like a bluish green at first. And once it comes, once it transitions to clear, then we're gonna do a 10 minute hot hold, which will soak those pads, open up those pores and allow more of that product to get out of those pads. And right now, we are past that 10 minute hold. We are now running hot water again, looking for it to come clean and clear, which we're, we're there pretty now. pretty much there, yeah. So at this point, um, do you want to go ahead and shut off the water? We're going to transition to ambient temps and get ready for sanitizing of the filter to go back to filtration. Kill it. Just uh, turn on the cold water. Just the cold? So in order to make this work, we need to make sure that the bell is completely full of water and we have pressure on it. That pressure is gonna push the water from the outside of here through the pad down an outer outlet. So we wanna keep it at about five PSI which we're at, and I'm gonna open up these, these two valves on the top completely, which will help push the hot water out and get us transitioned into cold. Because we're crystal clear now. We're kinda on that final stage of this process. And we just so choke hot. it off a little bit to keep our pressure differential. That's coming up pretty cold. Yeah. This, this is so going to be hot. Yeah. So right now we're at midway point here, cold down here. You get on top of here yep. and it'll burn your hands. After this process, we have a sanitizer cycle where we'll make sure that it's completely sanitized before we try to filter again. And once we're done with that sanitizer cycle, we need to basically purge it with CO2, push any oxygen and water out, so that way it's completely devoid of anything that could really bother the meat. So I'm just feeling to see where the cold water is at. So if you feel the outside of the bell here, you can feel cold water, kind of lukewarm right here, and it's about hot right here. So this is our transition zone. So we're trying to push all of this hot water out. Um, and the pads, are gonna stack up about to right here. So the first part's gonna clear out pretty fast as it pushes through the pads and out through here. A lot of what we're doing isn't like exact time frames or anything, it's more you use your senses. How does it feel? How does it smell? How does it taste? That's what we're looking for for the most part. After so much gallonage, and that can fluctuate depending on how 
you know, what products you're running through? Is there a lot of fruit in there? Is there a lot of sediment? Did you pull something from the bottom? Did the leaves come through and you didn't dump that tube out? Right. You know, that stuff will plug up the filters. If you run too much pressure on the back flush, you can impact the filter pads, which will cause them to become no longer functional. Yeah. So at that point, what you do is you drain this completely, right. lift this bell off, and then put the new pads in. And this process, which we're doing right now, is the same process when you're hydrating the pads. Um, very similar, because you're gonna run ambient water through there and you're gonna make sure it doesn't smell like the paper products that the yeah. filter is made out of. Um, because you don't want that in, you don't want those flavors right in your finished product that you're gonna drink or sell to yeah. customer. You don't want one mead contaminating another mead, especially if it's very, very dark and has a very strong flavor. And when it's dark, this process will take hours and hours and hours to get it to finally run clear again. We're just about there. It's still a little warm. You can go ahead and cut it. Yep, so now, now we're gonna end up, we're gonna drain this thing. We're gonna put a gooseneck up on there. And as soon as we have a pump available, which we no longer have, um, we got some other projects going on. We will, we will sanitize the filter and be able to start running again. This is our sanitizer. It's basically a combination of water and paracetic acid. It's one of the more gentle options we can use for a sanitation process. There are way more volatile options, but this is the safest for us to use. It just takes a little bit longer, but it does the same job. Not every product does get filtered, um, but what we're trying to do with the filtration is with the seventh filter, which will usually get a lot of our products, um, we're trying to get that crisp brightness out of the, the product so when we pour it into the glass and your sun is shining through your um, window and it hits that and it just refracts and creates this nice golden color on your table. That's a thing of beauty. And, the process, and that's what we're looking for. Yeah, the process creates a lot of cloudiness from the different ingredients that get added in. So we just want to filter it to get it as clean and clear as possible. It's just, when you have a nice, bright, polished product, it just looks, it just looks Perfect. better tastes better, it's cleaner. Um, you don't have all that turbidity in there, given off, you know, given just little different flavors. It's just it's polished. So the reason why we want to start with the seven filter versus the 2.5 is that the 2.5 that's really going to polish the product. If we try to run something that has too much. Um, too many large particles in there, it would plug that filter instantly and we'd have a failed filter run. So what we're doing is we're just kind of pulling out a lot of those larger things and getting it ready. By the time it comes out of here, it's gonna have maybe a slight little haze to it, a slightly unfiltered beer, uh, but not hazy like, you know, a big haze bomb from your brewery. Um, <laughs> when we do the 2.5 filter, it's gonna be crystal clear like a nice crispy boy. If we tried to do that too soon, we'd end up plugging that filter and we'd have to redo everything. Redo this process, clear that out, and charge at it again. So it'd just be a lot of waste of time. And potentially, you could ruin your pads too if you impact it with too much solids. And you could waste those filter pads, which is And it's really hard to tell like how many times you're gonna have to do this process. Sometimes it's just once and you're good. And sometimes it's just not coming clear and you have to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And this process helps us get more filters out, which is why we don't immediately just replace the pads all the time. That would be expensive and it's just unnecessary. The pads are perfectly still usable as long as they go through this process. So oh, when we left, we hooked up for a sanitization cycle, which we ran for 20 minutes. Um, and we've broken that down, drained out the parasitic solution. Um, this vessel is now sanitized and there's a little bit of that parasitic water in here and that will oxidize the product on contact. So we want to make sure we get as much of that out as possible. 
So we're just running some CO2 into here and watching that pressure gauge. I'm getting up to 10 PSI right now. And just gonna blow it down. There's three different valves on this um, filtration system. We're gonna blow it out of each of those until it starts to dry out. Once there's like hardly any water coming out to dry, um, then we'll put this under pressure at 15 PSI and it'll be ready for the next filtration, which we'll do um, as soon as we're done with this. Um, as you can see, we got a pressure gauge to keeping an eye on. We've got one on top here and one down here. And when we're running a filtration, we're gonna make sure that we have a pressure differential. Usually I'm gonna be about half a bar where we're at right now, which is about eight PSI. Um, and that's gonna be the pressure on the product that's outside the filter. And then down here, we're gonna run about like five PSI, about three, um, three points lower. And that's our differential. That's gonna press the product through the pads and out the outlet. This is gonna be the one that takes the longest because what we're doing is we're filling up the cavity with the CO2 and using that pressure to push all of that solution out of the pads down the channel and out the bottom of the tank and through here. So we really want to make sure that we get that nice and dry. So if the pressure gets too high, um, you can impact the pads. And once you do that, they're no longer going to filter out the product. And it's just going to kind of send those solids through. It's going to come out murky. And if, it, if the pads are impacted because you went too high in pressure um, in the filtration process, then you're going to have to remove the bell, take the pads out, toss them away, and put some new ones in, and do um, hydrate those pads, similar to the regeneration process that we just did. Um, during this, as long as we don't go above 30 psi, there's not really much that we can do to really mess this up. If we get over 30 psi, we could blow out the um, the gasket down here. You could theoretically blow this bell off if you went too high, but you're probably not going to damage the pads. You're going to damage the, um, the vessel. When you're running product, it's where that pressure is very key and can get um, a little hairy. I'll blow out here quick. I'm going to run at 10 psi until this kind of dries out um, and we don't have those streams of water coming down. There's always going to be a little bit of mist coming out of there. There's always going to be some sanitization solution left in the pads. And we're going to run the product through to get the very last of that out. And in that process, you kind of do a little taste down where you make sure that the product is tasting like product. You kind of wait a little bit because you don't want to be drinking the parasitic solution. Um, but you will want to taste to make sure that it's not oxidized. There's no solution left in there. Um, but we want to get as much of it out now so we lose less product while we're filtering. Once we get this fairly dry, we're going to start driving this number up towards 15 PSI um, to really make sure we get all of that out. But we're going to get a lot of it out at 10. I'm going to go to the regulator and just turn it up to kind of... When we're running this for the blow down to get the parasitic out. We want to keep it right around 15. It's fairly safe. If we're running product, um, we definitely want to keep it substantially lower than that to keep the pads from becoming impacted with the product. Um, and where it kind of gets a little hairy is when you're filling up this valve. So what you'll do is you'll connect your pump outlet hose to the inlet on the filter here it's going to fill up the bell and you need to keep this blow off valve open and you want to watch it. As soon as the product starts coming out of this hose, you'll need to crack your outlet. And because as soon as it starts coming out, this is going to skyrocket up and you don't want it to go above 15. You want to keep it down below 10 um, and prep and you want to get it dialed in and you'll throttle it with your outlet valve into your third hose that will go to your next vessel. 
and you want to dial that in right at 8. If you go too far above that, um, too far, you go above 15 PSI, especially if you have it sit there for too long, you're going to end up putting too much pressure with solid products. When you're dealing with loose stuff like water, it's a lot less dangerous because that's not being filtered. It's just going to run right through those pads. It's when the solid particles are in there, the turbidity in your product running through the pads, all of those little particles, the fining agents, the fruit, that stuff is what can cause damage to the